Yo guys, this is Delirious Sanity, back with another video, and this time we're actually doing something a little different, and I'm going to be showing how to create the most basic of mods, or at least how to use the creation kit uh, for Fallout 70, or sorry, I'm reading the screen, Fallout 4, um, which of course is very similar to Skyrim, so, you know, what what's shown here can be used on there. Anyway, this uh, video was requested by a good friend of mine, so I figured I'd show how. The first thing you're going to want to do, step one, is going to uh, Google Bethesda Launcher. This website will come up, Bethesda.net. Uh, download the launcher for free. You're going to, of course, have to have purchased either Fallout 4 or Skyrim on PC, depending on which one you're using. And then uh, once you download that, it's going to be right down here. You open up your Bethesda Launcher, depending on whether you saved it to the desktop or what. And all your games and tools are going to be here on the left-hand side. Today we're going to be using the Fallout 4 Creation Clip, so we'll hit that, and it'll bring up this menu here. At first, there will be a download button right here, and you'll need to download it. It only takes like, I don't know, five minutes. Once you've got it downloaded, it'll say play right here, and you hit play, and it opens the program. And right now, we've already got it opened. The reason is because it takes a super long time to load. It probably takes a good three minutes to load this program and load the uh, save you have going. So as soon as you open this program, these windows may be in different spots. You can, um, you know, put them wherever you wish. I like it this order. Some people like the cell view under here and the object window, you know, taking up this whole side of the page. But this is just my way I like to do it. So starting off, we're going to uh, go ahead and hit this button here. And that will allow you to load the Fallout 4 ESM, so the master file. You can double click that and then just hit OK if you're starting fresh. If you're working on a mod that you already have saved, you're going to double click the mod as well, which will put this X right here. And then when you're on that mod, you're going to hit set as active file. And then when it says active file right here, and both of them are clicked, you're going to hit OK. That's the part that takes forever to load, is the master file and, of course, your mod. Since we've already loaded in, we're going to hit cancel. So not only is there these three windows, there's also an error window, which um, is going to have infinite errors no matter what. It doesn't matter if you have bugs in your game or what. I don't know why they even have this, but completely ignore it. All right. All right. So we'll set that down there. Don't have it in a place where it's going to constantly pop up. It's just going to be annoying. I can guarantee you that. So starting off, we're going to start off with a cell view. In the beginning, you're going to have to hit, uh, you know, wherever you want to go, whether it's Diamond City, somewhere in the Commonwealth, or Interiors. We're going to hit Commonwealth. Um, and the other tab, oops, it's not going to let me load that while it's loading. I'm just going to warn you, I know I've already said it, but everything in this takes forever to load, even this small thing. So, we're in, oops, now it has to load again, are you serious? Anyway. Once it loads, basically all of the locations in the Commonwealth are going to be in here. You can double click on any single one of them and they'll load in the render window. Now this navigation uh, bar here is terrible to use because if you scroll just the tiniest bit, it scrolls you past like, I'm already in the W's, you know. So we'll scroll up to Sanctuary. Go Sanctuary. I'm actually going to go to Vault 11. That's easier to use over there. So, Vault 111, yeah, exit. So we'll hit that, double click it. And when you double click it, it's going to load over here. It shows loading cell down here. So just be patient. It does take a while, like everything else in this program. If you double click it again, it's just going to ask you, like, your program's not responding. Would you like to close it or continue waiting? Definitely click continue waiting. Um, it's not frozen, it's just working hard. And this doesn't matter what kind of PC you have, it's going to take forever. So once this gets loaded up, 
show you everything in the object window. All right. So now that we're loaded up, we know what this is. Um, we'll go ahead and let that load everything while we're over here. So the object window is going to be every single object in the game, whether it's things that you see, like guns, ammo, character, whatever, or things that you don't, like markers that you could use to spawn things, or people, or whatever. Map markers, everything in the game is over here. Okay, So if you're new to modding, I would heavily recommend going through at least the items, miscellaneous, and world objects to understand where everything is, because those are going to be the three tabs you're using the most. So just to start off over here, we're going to find a container that we're going to put our stuff in. I like to use the safe, so you can just type in safe there, but you can use whatever you want. So we'll double click on safe, and it's going to pop up with the safes, um, you know, everything we can edit on this specific safe. The first thing that I heavily recommend getting in the um, groove of doing is giving your um, object an ID, I always give it a prefix because then it makes it a hundred thousand percent easier to find your safe. If you just name it safe like every other safe, good luck finding it. You're gonna have to go to container and type safe, it's just gonna be annoying. So we'll go ahead and do safe. Oop. All right. And the first thing that I do is uh, give it an ID and save it. So we'll hit OK. So this here is going to ask you if you want to create a new form. Creating a new form means that this object is now going to be its own thing. And it's going to be named DS, DS, DS underscore safe. Meaning that if I edit this object, nothing happens to any other safe in the game. However, if we hit no, then it changes the name to the basic safe. It changes that to my name. And if I ever edit this safe, it's going to edit every single safe in the game, which is going to get in the way of a lot of mods. So please never do that. Uh, create a new form. All right, now we're going to find a weapon and items. Delete that safe there. All right, what do we got? Let's pick a random weapon. Let's pick, oh, I don't know, the deliverer. because I like that weapon. So double click it once again. Create your ID, of course. And deliver. All right. And we're going to hit OK and save it as a new form. All right. So that's the super basics of the object window. Now we're going to go into the render window to show you how it's done. The first thing I like to do is kind of click on the top part right here to make sure that we're in the render window so if we press buttons it's only doing things over here um, okay so whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know why my game is being super laggy like that so first and foremost we're gonna teach you controls if you hit shift and you move the mouse you're moving the way that you view in order to go forward or backward, you scroll forward or scroll backward. So scroll forward, backward, doesn't matter. All right? All right. Simple enough. Um, when you first start in the game, there's going to be a ton of markers everywhere, like this stuff. Um, as you're a beginner, you won't understand most of this stuff, but you'll slowly understand it as you add like markers and spawn points and all that stuff. But for now, we're going to hit M, and it's going to get rid of all the markers, which is very nice because you're just trying to focus on one thing and not have everything in the way. Okay, so now that we know the basic movement, we're going to move just right over here in front of this uh, forklift, and we're going to place our items down so that we can mess with them. So, we're going to go back over here to the object window, hit all, and then type in your preface. Alright, here we are. We're going to go ahead and now edit the safe that we want to bring into the world. So, we can change the name that the people in the game are going to see. So, we'll call this DS safe, so Delirious Sanity safe. So, they'll know yours is different than any other safe. Um, you can also change all of these settings here 
though there's not a lot that you really will change on a container unless you're like changing the way that it looks or something like that. So I usually keep all that the same. However, this is your list of items that are going to be in the safe. Um, these ones with the question mark are not randomly generated, but they're generated. Um, because that's a form list, which is a list of uh, items that could possibly spawn there, but we're not going to get into that right now. Anyway, we'll go ahead and delete what you've got in there, and we're going to add our deliverer. All right. And if you click on this, it then pops up right here. That's the object you're um, editing. Like if we wanted to change that to a stim pack, so you type stim pack and hit enter. And there you go. You've now got a stim pack in there. And if you want 100 stim pack, you change this number to 100. And then if you look over here to your account, now there's 100 stim packs in that uh, safe. But we don't actually want that. We want our deliverer. And you can put five of them in there if you want to. Whatever floats your boat. So we'll go ahead and hit OK here. So now that safe is saved with our deliverer in it. Now that we've edited our safe, I drag it into the world. I personally like to edit things before I put them in the world. Because once you have them in the world, then you're messing with that instance of the item and not the entirety of the item. So... It just gets a bit confusing, so go ahead and definitely edit everything before you put it in the world. Anyway, so now that we have an object in the world, the easy way of moving this object around is using the left click on the mouse and dragging it wherever you want it. And then to rotate it, use the right click on the mouse and rotate it however you wish. Now if you want to get into the movement more um, precisely, I guess, Hit E, and that brings up your X, Y, and Z axis. So you can move it left, right, and up if you drag these arrows. Okay. So if you hit E again, goodbye. And now you can do it normally. Okay. I don't often use that, but to uh, make it higher or lower, it's up to you, though. A lot of people do use it all the time. And if you wanted to rotate it on every axis, you would hit W. And now you can rotate it using these. I'm not going to mess with that because I don't want it off center. I want it to be perfectly flat. But it's always an option. So we'll hit W again and it gets rid of that. The other thing is when, you're, um, when you have your thing locked on an item, so it's green like this, you'll be rotating around the item, which makes it kind of hard to move around. So if you hit another item with the track, or not the tractor, the forklift, and now we're rotating around the forklift, and you hit back to your safe, now we're rotating back around our safe. And you can zoom in and zoom out of that property. So we'll get nice up close and personal with our safe. So Double clicking the safe is going to be the same thing as double clicking it in here. Um, except it's going to bring up with this other uh, menu. So you can choose ownership. You can, uh, you know, give it to a certain NBC, which means that if you get into it, you're stealing from it. Um, or you can hit no crime, which means that it's not a crime to get into that safe, but it might be owned by someone else. You can then go to lock, which I like to do for a majority of it because it's like, Add some realism, right? So you can lock this safe um, to any type you want. Um, what I like to do in my mods is require a key and then go and make my own key and hide that key somewhere to kind of make a little mission out of getting your object rather than just walking up, opening the safe, and getting everything because I feel like every mod does that and it makes the game boring. Anyway, you can go through these and check out, you know, all the extra um, stuff. There's quite a few different tabs. But if you want to edit it how you were when you double clicked over here, you hit edit base. And now we're back in the same window we were earlier. And we've got our deliverer, everything that we have in there. So I just wanted to show you how to actually do that. So we're okay with that. Now we want to change our deliverer to whatever we want, right? This is, 
I mostly make weapon mods, so this is where I spend most of my time. Um, over here, we can change it to be whatever we want. We can call it, I don't even know, big gun. Sure, whatever. Um, uh, what kind of equip type is it? Like, is it both hands, right handed, left handed, whatever? Um, enchanting, so you can give it like enchantments and stuff. If you're looking to give it a legendary, this is not where you do it. It won't work if you put that on there as a legendary, just so you know. You can increase the value, so like, let's make it worth a million caps. Two, three, one, two. Alright, you know, now it's worth a lot of caps. Um, or you can make it something realistic, like, you know, 35 caps or whatever. Uh, if you go over here to flags, you'll see um, all kinds of things like uh, NPCs use this type of ammo. Uh, you can make it automatic. You can make it to where you can't drop it out of your inventory. So you could do that for, like, let's say the key that you made to open up that safe so that they can never drop it so that they'll always have access. Or um, you can make it spawn with the scope. Uh, of course, you want the playable checked if you're going to be using the weapon. And if you only want you to use the weapon, like you can't give it to a companion or something, then click player only. And if we go down to here, the game data is the majority of the actual weapon. Um, like stuff like the weight, uh, you can make it weigh nothing or weigh something very small so that it's not taking up all your weight. Uh, the speed in which it fires, if you put that very high, it's going to be firing like a madman, especially if it's automatic. If you put that too high, you could probably crash your game. Reload speed. I personally usually actually turn this down a little bit because I like the more realistic reloading as if it were in real life rather than video game reloading where it's just like two seconds and your gun's reloaded. Not realistic. Anyway, you can add how many projectiles it shoots. So if I wanted to shoot five 10 millimeter bullets at once, you can do that. Uh, crit chance bonus. Um, there's a lot of stuff here you can look over. You can override the projectile, which is an easy way of changing what the gun shoots. It's not the proper way of doing it, but it's an easy way of doing it. So if you wanted to shoot a Fat Man projectile, which is, of course, the mini nuke, you can do that, or multiple mini nukes if you really want. Um, you can do all that. You can add resistances to the weapon, which doesn't really make much sense for weapon. Um, on hit, you can have it explode people, dismember people. I usually like dismember just because I like to shoot people's heads off. Um, not in real life, of course. Uh, you can put range on it. So like a sniper would have a lot more range than a uh, pistol would have. Um, down here, you can change the base damage. So it's base 25. If I make that 50, that doubles the damage of my weapon. And the one thing that I would uh, be sure to uh, keep an eye on when you're changing your damage is your damage per second. Because this gives you a more realistic damage output um, for when you're shooting at enemies. Because you're not usually shooting one bullet, which is going to be your base damage. You're, you know, laying into whatever you're shooting. So keep an eye on this. If it's too high your gun's going to be way too powerful. Uh, for example, if I hit automatic here, it increases that number a lot. Therefore, I've got an automatic gun that has 50 base damage. That's just going to kill things in like two hits. So it's not going to be very fun. So I like to keep that realistic, but it's up to you. Um, critical damage multiplier. So like when you get a crit, how much, how many times are you going to multiply it? You can do like a really low damage over here and then like a high crit to make it like an only crit weapon or whatever whatever you want to do here if you go to damage types you can t click new and then uh, put whatever damage type you want so I personally like uh, cryo and then the damage uh, the actual damage it's doing so let's go 25 so now it's uh, doing cryo damage for 25 damage uh, you can also edit that over here if you just want one and put it to whatever you want. Okay, and then down here is the ammo type that it's going to be shooting. Um, so 
you can pick whatever ammo type you want. If you want your deliverer to shoot a 44 instead of a 10 mil, you can do that. Uh, you can also change the capacity of the magazine, which is nice. Uh, you can make it bolt action, so it shoots a single shot, then has to reload. Um, sh disable shells, so like you won't see the casing come out. Um, there's a lot to edit down here. What I like to do is actually make my own ammo types. Um, by going over to your object window, finding an ammo, renaming it, uh, changing its damage, and then picking it on this list. Uh, the other thing that you can edit with weapons is the art and sound. For example, if you're going to put a skin on it, you can hit edit model right here and uh, unclick valid only. And then you can make it swap, uh, you know, skins with anything in the game. Uh, or you can even go to, this is a bad weapon to use. Ah. Go to custom material and you can pick any custom material like you have to find the materials in the game and then figure out what materials you want so that's a little bit more complex but you can do that too or you can uh, if you're playing on PC or Xbox One you can add, in, add your own materials to the uh, code of the game so that you can then add it to um, a weapon or something I also like to change the attack sound if you're changing the ammo type because then it gives you a little bit more realism but we're not going to mess with any of that. I'm just showing you like where everything is and how to use it. If you hit OK, um, now you've got your weapon inside your safe. And your safe is located in uh, Vault 111. So that's pretty much the basics of it. Um, if you want to detach yourself from an item in the world, you hit D. See, we have to be clicked into here. That's what I was talking about earlier. Hit D. You can detach yourself. Click it again, hit D, detach yourself. So that you're not rotating around that one item. Um, I think that, oh yeah, um, if you want to go up and down with the camera, if you hold down the scroll thing on your mouse and go up or down with the mouse, you can do that. Um, let me see, oh yeah, A on the keyboard makes uh, like basically the difference between night and day which is nice because you can have some light to work in. Um, let's see, okay, so we've got our mod, let's save it. I always save intermittently. I'm not saying that this program always crashes, but I've had it crash twice to where I lost like hours of working on a mod. And let me tell you, when you're working on a big mod, and you're doing all kinds of things, you're not keeping track in your head of what you're editing. So if you lose all that progress and you try and go back to that mod, more than likely you're going to have tons of bugs because you won't remember what you edited and what you didn't edit. So make sure you intermittently save. So now we've got our mod saved. We want to go ahead and upload it. The first thing that you have to do is log into Bethesda.net. So log in, um, and then you can go ahead and file. Ooh, whoa. God, why is a frame rate drop randomly? File, upload plugin to Bethesda.net, and then you can hit whatever console you play on. I personally play on PS4. And then you can hit create new mod, and tutorial, and then mod description, this mod adds a weapon. Okay, whatever. And then what kind of a mod it is. So since it's just a weapon mod, we're just going to hit weapon. So that, and these are basically like if somebody types in on Bethesda.net weapons, then yours will come up. But if they type in perks, yours is not going to come up because you don't have perks checked. Some modders click on all of these and it's the most annoying thing. Only click on what your mod is. Um, if you have a huge description, you can export that information and save it on your computer so that every time you update the mod, you can click import info and that then imports the description that you had saved, which is nice. And then if you hit create here, it's going to upload this mod to Bethesda. Because I'm not trying to do that, we're not going to do that. But that's the last step right there. Now, 
you've created a mod, and it's on Bethesda.net. So if you go to Bethesda.net, my mods are right here. Um, if you get into the mod menu, so you click this, and then you go down to whatever, Fallout 4 mods, and then you're in this menu, and then you click authored right here, it'll show your mods that you've edited. And this is just uh, one of the mods that I've done. So if you click on it, you can then edit uh, here and then add a photo or a better description or whatever you want to do. Change, you know, add your YouTube video that describes the mod, whatever. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope the video wasn't too long. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try and explain them. Um, the thing that I would recommend the most is just don't really publish any pro any projects until you really have like made a few mods and like really tested them in game. Because the thing that I find is that even if it's working on PC and even if you think like you're looking at it in the creation kit and you're like, okay, this is perfect. If you don't test that thoroughly, I guarantee you people will have problems with your mods and then they'll down or it's not Reddit, they're not going to downvote your mod. They're just not going to like your mod. It's never going to become popular. Um, but if you do a good job in bug testing, then you end up with, uh, you know, better mechanics in your mod and everything. Just everything works much more smoothly. Uh, I would also recommend just becoming familiar with the object window because that's what you're going to spend most of the time in here doing. And you're going to find objects, you're going to edit them, you're going to add quests, you're going to add form lists. All that is more in-depth. And I won't be explaining because I don't have hours and hours. But basically just have fun. Thank you for watching.